Welcome back to some more Miyakashi. So where we last left off, well, for most occasions, uh, Satoshi went missing. And from what I remember, he either got kidnapped and I, that's that's only two theories so far in my head. Like he either got kidnapped and put in torture room or he ran to the train station, to the train. And never came and never returned. But as you can see here, we're gonna move on to the eighth chapter of Miyakashi. <clears throat> so let's see here. And eh? what did you just say? This is information from a reliable source. It appears that they found the murder of Satoshi-kun's aunt. It had been a few weeks since the murder. Satoshi-kun still hadn't been found. I had no new information on his whereabouts. Kasai's report came as a result completely out of the blue. Does that mean the police ar arrested the culprit? It seems that he confessed during his inter interrogation regarding another case. That sounded strange. If it was Satoshi-kun they arrested, he wouldn't have ordered it that way. It sounded as though Satoshi-kun wasn't the culprit. Kasai, who's the culprit? So it wasn't Satoshi-kun? I swallowed those final words. I was convinced that it was Satoshi-kun. The police and Oishi must have thought the same way. The reason Oishi approached me is because he was convinced that Satoshi-kun did it. Don't worry, it doesn't seem like it's Satoshi-kun. I heard it was a lunatic who was aiming to continue the series of mysterious deaths. What? A lunatic? What do you mean? Kasai shrugged. I don't know. Since the investigation is classified as a confidential case, the information I can get is limited. Confidential? Why? To prevent the village from developing a bad reputation. You don't see articles about kidnapping while the police are negotiating with the culprit, do you? It's something similar to that. Come to think, come to think of it, I hadn't seen anything about the ants' murder on TV or in the newspaper. These strange deaths have happened four years in a row now, on the day of Watanagashi. There are those who try to make light of it. And now, this lunatic who confessed their ants' murder said he did it in imitation of the series of mysterious deaths. No words. Kasai didn't know anything else, so instead of probing him further, I reviewed the information myself. I was really shocked to learn all this. I was convinced that Satoshi couldn't kill her. I thought that was the reason he had to disappear. But it was actually some lunatic who killed her, and he had no relationship relations to the ant whatsoever. So Satoshi couldn't have nothing to do with the murder? So why did he disappear? I couldn't accept that this lunatic had killed the ant, and what's really strange is the phrase Kasai used four years in a row now. After all, I'd been thinking that this murder happened because Satoshi Kun had been in a dire situation, and had nothing to do with the series of mysterious deaths. I felt as though Satoshi Kun's case had become somebody else's. The series of mysterious deaths in Hinamizawa is also known as the Curse of Oyashiro Sama. Satoshi-kun's case had become one of those mysterious deaths. In other words, Satoshi-kun's case has become a part of Oyashiro-sama's curse. I didn't like the way that sounded, because it was as though the curse had swallowed Satoshi-kun. Oh wow, and we're in the police station. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to confirm the tip that Satoshi-kun took a train to Tokyo. We don't even know whether or not he's in the prefecture, to be honest. Boy, she broke the seal on a new can of instant coffee. I thought you knew his whereabouts already, since you seemed very convinced he was the culprit. Nah, <laughs> you got me. Boy, she chuckled and poured a cup of coffee which looked far too hot. You have some good sources, huh? It's a highly classified case, but you already have this information. I wonder who leaked it. Looks like we need to review our security precautions. Oishi smirked. Seemed he knew why I was here today. 
I'm one of the Sarazakis, after all, and my ears are open. I smirked back at him. It's all about bluffing. Anyway, since we're friends now, why don't we have a chat? <laughs> Let me ask you first, who's the real culprit? Who's this real culprit? I heard he was a lunatic, but what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know how to answer that question. I don't want to know the answer myself. Really, I was convinced Satoshi Kun was the real culprit. It was rather surprising for me, too. Oishi threw himself on the sofa and crossed his hands behind his head. He looked up at the ceiling and smiled wryly. I suddenly received a call from the prefectural police the other day. They said that one of the guys in detention confessed to the murder of the housewife. Who is it? He's a crazy dopehead. He's been in and out of prison for drug abuse. His statement says that he was interested in a series of mysterious deaths and wanted to imitate them. Are you sure he's the real culprit? I didn't interrogate him myself, but the prefectural police tells me that he was he has information that only the real culprit would know. He seems to have thrown the murder weapon into the OG River. They're searching for him right now. If it's found, his statement would, will be solid. Even if the weapon wasn't found, would the case be closed? Probably. His statement clearly outlines the state of the crime scene and the body. This information, and like I said, covers details that only the actual murderer would know. You don't seem quite convinced. No words. Oishi, still looking up at the ceiling, went quiet. As a matter of fact, the dopehead was rather already dead by the time I got their call. Dead? You know those spoons that are forked at the tip? They use those at the detention facility. I was told that he swallowed one and choked on it. They couldn't tell if it was a suicide or if it was caused by some mental disorder. Well shit, how the fuck did he even pull that off? Mental disorder. I imagine somebody swallowing that spoon and gagged. So the investigation hadn't been done that thoroughly. But although I'm not convinced my superiors are, I think with that the case will be closed. Boy, she turned his eyes from the ceiling to me. He looks serious. This is just what I personally feel, okay? So please keep it between the two of us. I believe that this lunatic is some kind of mistake. No words. It might be either a big misunderstanding caused by a chain of coincidence or, you know? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I still believe that the real culprit is Satoshi Hojo-kun. You sound confident. Unfortunately, we couldn't find anything to prove he was at the crime scene. We obtained a warrant to search his house after he disappeared, but we still found nothing. But you still believe he did it? Yes. I wonder how you can be so sure even though you don't have any evidence. It's incredible. Is that supposed to be like the hunch of an ex inexperienced detective? Yep. It's the hunch of a guy who's been in this business for several decades. Oishi smiled in satisfaction, but I didn't feel relieved. Where did Satoshi couldn't go? His disappearance convinced me that he was the culprit. If he wasn't the culprit, there'd be no real reason for him to disappear. To disappear. What if the murder actually was done by that lunatic and Satoshi Kun's disappearance has nothing to do with it? In other words, what if Satoshi Kun disappeared because the Sonazaki family didn't like my relationship with him and he has nothing to do with the murder? Was Satoshi Kun a culprit or a victim? The reason for his disappearance had become unclear. Hmm. I don't think they'd bother to make one person disappear just because of an undesirable relationship. What do you hear from inside the Sonazaki family? Do you know anything? I wouldn't be here if I did. Nah, <laughs> you're right. Oishi laughed out loud while scratching his head, and after he stopped laughing, he leaned over. All right, how about this? Why don't we make a deal? A gentleman's deal. A deal? On what? On information about Satoshi Kun's disappearance. If you find any information like that, you tell me, and I'll also provide you with the information if I find any. Do we have a deal? That sounds too convenient for you. Oishi chuckled. Shion-san, I think if we leave things as they are, 
they'll conclude that the lunatic committed the murder. If that happens, Satoshi Kun's disappearance will be treated as just another runaway miner. They won't search for him as actively as before. No words. But I will continue searching for him. Only I will do it. I believe you're intending to do the same. Our motives are different, though. I just want to know if he's safe, but you'd like to arrest him, wouldn't you? <laughs> if the murder case was considered solved, Satoshi Kun would be free, regardless of his innocence. I doubt that. <laughs> Oishi chuckled again, but his smile didn't reach his eyes. Well, let's be friends from now on. The enemy of your enemy is your friend, no? No, well, I... I would... would I call that statement bullshit? I'm not opposed to the Sonazaki family, though. Oh, really? I apologize, then. <laughs> this is the way of Karado Oishi, huh? As Sis and Kasai said, I wouldn't want him as my enemy or my ally because both would be too risky. I probably shouldn't let my guard down in front of this big fat weasel. I sipped on the coffee to fill up the silence, though I wasn't thirsty. Outside the window I could see normal life taking its course, but Satoshi Kun wasn't there. He should have been there, but he wasn't. I was scared that I might grow used to this absence someday. Where was he? I wonder how Satoshi Kun is doing. I hope he's alright. Tch. I know you think he might be dead. Don't patronize me. Do you know what people are calling his disappearance in Hanamizawa? Huh? They say that he was demoned away. To be demoned away means the same thing as being spirited away. It's a part of the local dialect. He was kidnapped and taken to hell through the bottom of the Onikafuji swamp. That's ridiculous. Anyway, the series of mysterious deaths has struck for the fourth time. It's too soon, but people are already talking about next year. Are you saying that the murder was the result of Oyashiro Sama's curse? The victim was one of the Hojos, after all. She was involved in the damn conflict, though indir indirectly. Really, it's not surprising that some people have taken an interest in, in the incidents because they do always happen on the day of Watanagashi. That's ridiculous too, Oyashiro-sama's curse. Though I said that, I couldn't quite wipe away the fear from my mind. Why did Satoshi Kun disappear? Was it the Sonazaki family? Did he run away from the police? Did he really kill his aunt in the first place? Why did he even disappear? He's on his own. Oyashiro-sama's curse has nothing to do with it. But, hmm, that's strange. Satoshi Kun and Oyashiro Sama's curse. Somebody once mentioned those two together before. Hmm, when did I hear that? Ah, that's right, that rainy day. It was Reina Ryugu who told me that when we were taking shelter in that shack. Ah, I remember the creepy story that she told me at that time. Satoshi Kun wants to leave Hinamizawa and run far away, even if only unconsciously. That's what Reina Ryugu said. Reina had definitely pointed out that Satoshi Kun wanted to leave Hinamizawa at that time. She also said, Everything he's going through is a sign of Oyashiro sama's curse. She said that for sure. She had definitely mentioned Oyashiro sama's curse. The series of mysterious deaths has struck four times. Was Satoshi Kun being controlled by the curse? Is that why he killed his aunt and was demoned away? No way. That can't be true. Satoshi Kun's smile faded away in my mind. Satoshi Kun disappeared. Not only that, the reason for his disappearance also disappeared. It must have been done by a human being. I can't accept that he was demoned away. Notebook, page 43. Oh, this is the library. 
I moved from one chair to another because the air conditioning was too cold. I moved with my notebook, my pen case with a bunch of keychains, and my cup of milk tea. I did it all in one go. I sat down in a new chair, then opened my notebook again. I scribbled my thoughts and sank into silence. The series of mysterious deaths. Dubbed the curse of Yashiro sama I've been viewing each incident as a separate case, even though it was followed by another one. I've never looked at all the cases as part of one big scheme. After I wrote down all the incidents on paper, it became clear to me that all of them served the same agenda. I wrote down the victims. The first year, the construction site manager. The second year, Satoshi Kun's parents. The third year, the priest. The fourth year, Satoshi Kun's aunt. For the fourth year, one could consider Satoshi Kun himself to be the victim rather than his aunt. If I consider that each case arose from the grudge over the, the damn conflict, it's quite simple. In the first year, the construction manager was killed because he was a symbol of the damn construction in itself. Of course, the real enemy was the Ministry of Construction, but it wasn't as clear a target. That manager, on the other hand, had been aggressively shouting back at the villagers, so he was a more appropriate enemy to attack. If Yoshiro sama had really cursed someone, it would have been the officials from the ministry. It's apparent that the target was selected based on the villagers preference. The second year, the accidental death of Satoshi Kun's parents. It's said that they were fell from a cliff in some park, but it's doubtful that it was really an accident. His parents were labeled as traitors to the village because they sided with the dam construction, even though they were also from Hinamazawa. The Hojo family was ostracized during the dam conflict in order to prevent further pro-dam activists from rising up. That means that the Hojos were necessary during the conflict to play the role of the traitor. So when the conflict was over, they no longer served any purpose. The construction site manager was a symbol of the external enemy. The Hojos were a symbol of the internal enemy. Those people fell victim to the curse and it seemed that the grudge over the day of conflict had ended. Yet those incidents were followed by another one. The third year, the leader of one of the three families, the priest Farood, suddenly died of an illness with an unknown cause. His wife drowned herself on the same night. She seemed to have left a note that said she was sacrificing herself to pacify Oyashiro Sama's anger. Whether it was a fatal disease or suicide, their deaths looked suspicious. Mayan admitted that the Sonazaki family didn't like the priest's attitude. They didn't like how the priest had been generous toward the pro dam activists. The priest wasn't quite a traitor, but he was certainly uncooperative. Looking at these incidents, I realized that the curse was performed based on the degree of hostility. Enemy, traitor, and dissident. This meant that the curse was actually payment. It was a punishment for the criminals of war. In the fourth year, I didn't understand this case at first to be honest. At first I believed that this case was separate from the other ones, even though it occurred on the same day. I never thought there would be any relation to the other three, but when I wrote it down and looked at it objectively, the victim is a relative of a traitor. After enemy, traitor, and dissident, a relative of, of a traitor doesn't sound too odd. It comes naturally as a fourth target. On the day the villagers worship Yashiro Sama, their guardian deity, the criminals of the damn conflict, have been punished by the curse. Just like how I was forced to pay at the Senazaki house, the criminals were made to pay as well. After writing these things out, I started thinking that the fourth incident might be in line with the series of mysterious deaths after all. Whether it was Satoshi Kun or the Dopehead, it seemed that they were forced to play the role of a murderer as part of a, of a bigger scenario. scenario. Even if Satoshi Kun was the real culprit, even if he killed his aunt because of an ordinary grudge, the murder seemed synchronized with the grand scheme of the series of mysterious deaths in Hinamizawa, which is a payment plan for the war criminals. That murder was the result of his, plan, of his pain. But what if somebody planned that as part of a scenario? For instance, somebody might have suggested him to kill his aunt on that day, that night, at that place. 
and no doubts that Satoshi Kun decided to kill her in order to protect Satoko. But did he really reach that conclusion on his own? Satoshi Kun was optimistic and somewhat detached, as far as I know. Would he really have considered murdering his aunt if it was to protect his sister? Couldn't it be possible for somebody to have chosen the aunt as the fourth year's murder beforehand? And they used Satoshi Kun? And Satoshi Kun was eliminated because of his connection with them? Looking at it that way, the murder of the first year resembles this case. The main culprit behind that case hasn't been found yet, dead or alive. The other culprits testified that their fight had turned into a slaughter. But wouldn't it be possible that the main culprit had manipulated the situation? What if he had been told to kill someone that day, at that time, and in that place? I'm certain the first murder resembles Satoshi Kun's case very much. So, did that mean Satoshi Kun was being controlled by somebody else? Oishi had presented me with a hypothesis that the Sonazaki family made Satoshi Kun disappear in order to end my relationship with the murderer. But when I read the notes I wrote down, his disappearance didn't seem too spontaneous. It seemed like a part of a bigger plan. Since I had unexpectedly got involved in that plan, I had to be separated from him. Then Satoshi Kun was demoned away as planned. At first, I also believed that the Sonazaki family made him disappear because they didn't like that I was in love with a member of a family of traitors. But something didn't. <laughs> but something didn't add up. Something felt strange. I wasn't the reason for his disappearance, after all. Even though I had never met him in the first place, Satoshi Kun was supposed to kill his aunt in June 1982, and then disappear. At one point, I had been thinking of taking revenge on the hag. I believed that she separated us. But what if my relationship with Satoshi Kun had nothing to do with, the dis with his disappearance? What would that mean? Who made Satoshi Kun disappear? I need to understand the series of mysterious deaths in order to solve this mystery. What did all these deaths mean? Who was behind them and what purpose did they serve? I want to know the purpose, the motive, and who was responsible. Who took Satoshi Kun? I want to know if he was still alive. The words. The series of mysterious deaths in Hanamizawa is also called a Yashiro Sama's curse. What is that curse? Specifically, what kind of god is Oyashiro Sama? What blessings does he bring and what punishments does he dole out? I wrote down my thoughts in the notebook. What's Oyashiro Sama? What is he? I scribbled these things down. I was so absorbed by it that I didn't realize somebody had been standing behind me, me, watching me the whole time. I couldn't stop myself from gasping when I realized that. Oh look, it's Mio. I'm sorry, did I startle you? Hehe. <laughs> the intelligent looking woman giggled. No, I was just a bit surprised. Sorry about that. She could have apologized a little better too since she'd been... She'd been watching me from behind. No fucking shit you've been watching me the whole damn time. What was your whole concern of me um, concentrating? But she just stared at my face instead. Are you Shion Sanazaki-san? You must know since, since you know my name, but I don't know who you are. Being twins is a pain sometimes. People you've never met before can tell exactly who you are. <laughs> I'm sorry. The Sonazaki-san I know would never be seen in the library, so I assumed that you were her twin sister. The woman giggled again. Well, you were right. I am Shion Sonazaki. Nice to meet you. May I ask your name? Oh, I'm sorry. I should have introduced myself first. She seemed to love her own hair because she kept running her fingers through it Boastfully. I'm Mio Takano. You can call me Mio, Shion chan. Nice to meet you, Takano san. Her condescending attitude bugged me. I hate meeting people like that. I closed my notebook and got ready to leave the desk. Oh, are you upset? Thank you for your concern. I like to be alone when thinking, so I'm moving to another spot. 
Excuse me. That's a shame. I thought we'd be good friends. Did you? I don't think so. I finally met someone with the same passion. A fellow researcher of a Yashiro Sama's curse. I think it's quite unusual to meet someone like that. She saw my notes. My face reddened. These are just theories. It's all nonsense. Just childish scribbles. The series of mysterious deaths is also known as a Yashiro Sama's curse. Though each death is an independent incident, all of them clearly share the same purpose. Each year someone dies of the curse and someone else is sacrificed and disappears. But what? What are you saying all of a sudden? Someone dies and someone else what? I was taken aback by her weird spile. Spiel. But I realized right away that she'd said something extraordinary. Didn't you notice that the number of victims is always even? Haven't you realized that yet? The number of victims is always even? I was confused, but I tried to figure out what that meant. The damn construction site manager died in the first year. There was only one victim. In the second year, the victims were the parents of Satoshi-kun, so it was two people. In the third year, it was the priest, and if her death was also planned, his wife, two again. And in this year, the fourth year, Satoshi-kun's aunt died, and Satoshi-kun went missing. If Satoshi-kun's disappearance was planned, the number of the victims was two. It's true. Except for the first one, the victims always came in an even number, too. Wait, I had just concluded myself that the first case resembled the fourth one. The main culprit was still missing. He might have been demoned away, just like Satoshi-kun. No words. See? Doesn't it make sense now? Takana-san sounded like a teacher who had showed me how to solve a difficult math problem. Well, God damn it! this isn't freaking school, we're in a goddamn library. I wasn't quite convinced, but I couldn't deny what she said either. Did I give you enough hints? I really would have enjoyed a conversation with you, but I think you prefer being alone. <laughs> I'm sorry that I wasn't respectful, Mio-san. Please call me Shion. <laughs> she seemed content that I changed my attitude. She kept giggling for a while. She didn't seem that reliable. I didn't want to be acquainted with her for too long, but I don't get to talk to people very much, and what she said interested me. Let me introduce myself again. I'm Mio Takano. Call me Mio. Me or more like Mayo. Mio, whatever. Pleased to meet you, Mio-san. I'm Shion Sazaki, Mio's twin sister. Please call me Shion. I took the hand that Mio-san held out as a sign of reconciliation. Please tell me more. You said that there are always two victims. One dies due to the curse and the other one is a sacrifice? Xian-chan, before we get into that, could you tell me why you became interested in this? She leaned over and looked into my eyes. It was kind of uncomfortable. Why would you stare into me for fuck's sake? Mio-san, how much do you know about me? I guess you have an idea if you know my name. I don't know much, just that you recently returned from a boarding school. I see, so I think you can imagine that I want to know about the series of mysterious deaths that happened while I was away. I'm just curious. I see, you're curious, eh? I got the impression that she knew about what happened to Satoshi-kun and me because she instantly recognized me as Shion, not Mion. I didn't know why I thought that way, as she shouldn't have access to sources that, for instance, Oishi does. It was just the look in her eyes that made me think that way. Let me ask you a question this time. You called me a fellow researcher of Oyashiro Sama's curse, didn't you? So why are you researching the curse? You also stated that there's always an even, an even number of victims in the mysterious deaths. It's true that Hinamizawa's mysterious deaths are often called Oyashiro-sama's curse, but why would you delve into the mysterious deaths if you're researching the curse itself? 
Xian Chan, you're asking too many questions at once. I can't tell what you really want to know. Oh, I couldn't say anything in return. Maybe I had been too inquisitive. I'll answer your questions one by one. I'm not just researching the curse, as my subject is much too much broader than that. I'm researching the history of Onikafuchi Village. In plain terms, I'm researching the dark and ancient history of Hinamizawa. Onikafuchi Village? Isn't Onikafuchi the bottomless swamp some people believe is connected to hell? And what dark history exactly? I kept asking questions. Miyo-san, however, looked pleased to hear them. Onikafuchi Village is the old name for Hinamizawa, as it was known back before the Maiji era. About the dark history, you know a little bit about the man-eating demons, I assume. Ah, the man-eating demons, huh? That was a fairy tale told in Hinamizawa. A long time ago, demons came out of the swamp, and while the villagers battled with them, they ended up living peacefully together. The villagers transcended and became a sacred people, having demon blood in their veins. That long forgotten fairy tale came back to my mind vividly. You know this story because you're a villager, of course, but what about the story of the cannibal banquet? Eh? What's that? You know that the villagers have the blood of man-eating demons in their veins, don't you? Yeah, I think I've heard of it. I dodged a question. Hinamizawa used to be a desolate village, but it grew in prominence after the Second World War and expanded its influence to Okonomiya and other areas. The people who disliked and discriminated against the villagers called us man-eating demons, I remember that. The young villagers don't take it seriously, but the older people can get seriously upset about it. They certainly can't take it as a joke. So the term man-eating demons is forbidden. We normally never use it. Even during my rebellious phase, I never spoke those words. Miyo-san, however, seemed to have no qualms with saying it out loud. Are you upset? About what? I know people hate that phrase in Hinamizawa. I apologize if I made you feel uncomfortable. The old people wouldn't like it, but I'm fine. Would you continue? Thanks. Okay, so the ancient villagers had a custom of cannibalism. They ritualized this custom and held various ceremonies based around it. The festival we hold in June isn't just an early summer festival. It used to be a banquet in which the villagers chased after a sacrifice and ate them. They bound the sacrifice to a table, gutted them, and dumped the organs into a river. Oh, Jesus, why would you say that? Wada can mean cotton, but it also means organs. Jesus, that's the root of the word Watanagashi. Organ drifting, Watanagashi. Indeed, I believe they started using futon mats to cover it all up around the Maiji era, according to my research. They wouldn't be able to do that openly nowadays. No words. Everything Miyo-san was talking about sounded startling. Well, no shit. I remember one time she said that in previous chapters before. I was just taken aback. I couldn't Wally believe it right away. She sensed that from my expression. It's not a hoax. I didn't make any of this up. If you promise not to tell anyone, I can show you my notes on Watanagashi. Mio-san took out a notebook from her bag and flipped through it. She appeared to be doing her research thoroughly. Thank you. I'd love to read it. Sure. I'd like to keep it confidential. <laughs> but I guess I should share it with my fellow researcher. Mio-san handed me the notebook a bit hesitantly. It looked like he, it'll take a whole night to finish reading. It was densely packed with information. I saw copies of various documents and quotes in there too. It wasn't just some delusion of hers. You told me that one person dies because of the curse and another person is sacrificed and disappeared, right? A person is sacrificed and disappeared and disappears. Satoshi couldn't have gone missing. Did he become a sacrifice? What is a sacrifice anyway? Mio-san looked pleased to hear my questions. 
Here are my questions again. She took out another notebook and handed, handed it to me. I think you'll understand once you read it, but I'll give you a digest version. Oyashiro-sama's curse is simply Oyashiro-sama's anger. In other words, the curse is caused by Oyashiro-sama's anger. Do you follow? Yes. You're saying that Oyashiro-sama was mad at the people who opposed the village during the damn conflict, and that's why the curse occurred. That's right. Oyashiro-sama's anger has to be pacified. If not, something even worse will occur. So all the successive priests at the Farood Shrine had to perform a sacrifice every time the curse struck in order to pacify Oyashiro-sama. It's called a sacrificial ritual. So each year on the day of Watanagashi, one person dies because of the curse. And another one is sacrificed to pacify Oyashiro-sama's anger. But only one person is actually murdered each time. I've never heard of human sacrifices being made. Naturally, there's no body. The ritual of sacrifice requires the offering to, to be sunk into the Onikufuchi swamp. That swamp is bottomless, and no one would ever surface once they were thrown in there. No body would never be found, of course. So, one of the victims is always thrown into the swamp every year? Does that mean Satoshi-kun is also at the bottom of that dark green swamp? I don't know. I'm not sure that they really throw them into the swamp, but those who make these incidents happen must be eliminating one person based on that legend. Each year, a traitor to the village dies on the day of Futanagashi because of a Yashiro-sama's curse, and another person is sacrificed in order to pacify Yashiro-sama's anger. That person's body will never be found because he or she is supposedly thrown into the bottom of a swamp. Yes, you get it. The series of mysterious deaths always involves both the curse and the sacrifice. It's a system that allows true traitors to die every year. No words. What I'm telling you now probably isn't sufficient, so it might be hard to grasp. Instead, I want you to take the time to read my notes. You'll see what you'll see that what I'm telling you isn't far from the truth at all. I heard a man's voice just then. A middle-aged man with a hat was waving at Mio-san from the entrance. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to talk to you more, but I guess we'll have another chance to chat. Another chance to chat? I'll leave those notes to you. I'm looking forward to hearing your opinions. Mio-san wrapped up the conversation and headed to where the man was waiting for her. She left her old notebooks in my hands. Mio-san waved at me as she left the library with her companion. I took a seat again and opened what she'd given me. What bugged me was the series of mysterious deaths, also known as the curse of Yoshiro-sama. Maybe I'd be able to get closer to the truth by reading these notebooks. If I study them carefully, I might be able to find out who was really behind the incidents. Why did Satoshi-kun have to disappear? What was he involved in? How did that happen? Maybe Takano-san... Maybe Takano's notes would bring me the answer. Research Notes Mio Takano I started flipping the pages, this time making sure that no one was watching over my shoulder. It was time for the library to close. I had to leave. I bought some food on my way home. I shut my door and locked it right away. Then I heard the noise. Then I heard the door of the neighboring apartment open. Kasai lived the next door. Nobody else lived on this floor of the nearly empty apartment building anyway. I clearly heard the door open and close. Kasai must have noticed that I came home and was coming over because he wanted to talk to me. I unlocked the door and shouted out to him. Is that you, Kasai? I'll leave the door unlocked for you. I'm not Kasai-san, Shion. That voice. I twitched. Can I come in? Sure, sis. 
The door slowly opened. My alter ego, Mion Sonazaki, appeared. Oh wow, it's Mion. She was holding a box of cake while smiling timidly. Are you going to keep staying there until I escort you? Come in. Sorry, this room doesn't look very cute. It looks comfortable. Sis looked a bit tense when entering my room. It was her first time here. How's life? My new school is as boring as I thought it would be. I usually go, but I skip classes when I don't feel up to it. I couldn't do that when I was going to St. Lucia's. <laughs> so St. Lucia's was really tough, huh? Uh, should go there sometime. <laughs> Sorry. I brought cake. Let's eat. Mion opened the box. I saw two cheesecakes there. We have the same taste in food, so we don't have to fight if we get two of the same thing. I chatted with her over the cheesecake. I talked to her about school and whatnot. If you need furniture, tell me. I might be able to get some for you. Hmm... I finally got used to this room, but I might move out soon, so furniture won't be necessary. Thanks, though. Dad wants me to come back home. I don't want to live with him, but he sounds desperate. <laughs> He'd be pleased if you came home. He looked lonely while you were gone. <laughs> you can only say that because you don't have to live with him. Come to think of it, this was the first time I talked to Sis since I was allowed to live as Shion Sonazaki. She didn't look like she... W she didn't look like I... Oh god. She didn't look like how she was at the Sonazaki house that day. The successor of the Sonazaki family and my twin sister are two different people. The demon lives inside the leader of the Sonazakis. Our bodies are exactly the same except for the tattoo of a demon on her back. Mion's destiny as the successor was set in stone when she got that tattoo. It's pretty simple. The Mion from that night was different from the Mion before me. When I was forced to tear off my fingernails, I'd momentarily despised her. But if I were the next leader of the family, I'd have done the same. Shion, how are your fingernails? The wounds have closed. I don't bandage them anymore because it looks too conspicuous. Conspicuous. But my nails still look ugly, so I don't really like showing them to people. I sneered at her, displaying my incomplete fingernails. Mion grew quiet and looked down. You don't have to apologize. You did what you had to do. You just played the role of the successor. I'm not holding any grudges. I'm sorry. Okay. Apology accepted. But, if you apologize one more time, that'll be cancelled. I won't forgive you for the rest of my life. Huh? What do you mean? Once you start apologizing, you never stop. So I'm cutting you off. Will you really forgive me? About Satoshi-kun as well? My heart ached when she mentioned his name. It felt just like the ache of an old wound. I figured you love him. I figured you loved him. No wonder. I shouted out loud in front of all of you. In other words, no shit. I'm not embarrassed anymore. <laughs> Granny truly believes you're, you've atoned. She thinks you've done all you needed to do. So the matter is finished. That's good. My pain won't go to waste then. I wonder where Satoshi can disappear to, though. I started choking when I heard her say that. I just said it to her myself. I just I said that I'd forgiven her completely, but that promise instantly evaporated. Just because of what she said, I felt like I'd turned into a completely different person. What did you just say, Mion? Did you say I wonder where Satoshi could disappear to? Who else could know other than you and your folks? What did you say? Where did he go? I felt my eyeballs 
reddening in anger. It felt as though they were about to pop. I choked on a burning sensation in my throat. Mion's expression rapidly changed. It looked like she noticed the devil's mask on my face. We were one and the same. We could understand each other's thoughts without voicing them. So showing our expressions was like unveiling everything in our hearts to the other. Uh, s sorry. Even though I told her not to apologize anymore, Mion apologized. I felt like strangling her. I was going to make her confess where she'd hid Satoshi Kun. If she told me she threw him into the Onikafuji swamp, I strangled her to death right then and there. I really don't know what happened to Satoshi Kun. That's a lie. It's true. Granny doesn't know anything either. Please believe me. Please believe me. That's a lie. Are you saying that Oyashiro Sama's curse demoned them away? There can't be a curse. There can't be. Words kept coming out of my mouth like I was chanting a spell. I wasn't speaking by my own will anymore. It was the demon who was controlling me. The demon that had been sleeping deep inside me woke up and was speaking through my mouth. My hands, I mean, the demon's hands grabbed me on by the neck. You guys demons, Satoshi can away. You and the Sonazaki family, give him back to me. Give him back. My hands slowly but surely squeezed Mion's neck. Mion put her hands onto mine. I looked at her fingers. Three of the fingernails on her left hand looked as ugly as mine. Mion? What's this? Tears rolled down her cheeks. She didn't have to answer. She had the same scars as I did. She atoned as well. The way those wounds were healing looked the same as mine. So did she get these wounds around the same time as I did? It was unfair that only you had to go through that. Hick, I felt so bad. Hick. Mion started sobbing. I stood there, petrified, still wringing Mion's neck. Since I found out you love Satoshi Kun, I really wanted you to be happy. Hick, because it's always you. It's always only you who has to suffer, even though we're twins. Hick. It didn't come as a surprise to me that Mion might also have loved Satoshi Kun as I did. We've always liked the same stuff, and even the same people. She was stupid enough to feel obligated towards someone like me. I I told Granny to leave you and Satoshi Kun alone. I shouted at her. Hick. Then she said she'd let you be if you if you atoned with sincerity. Hick. And you did, so you were supposed to live happily with him. But Satoshi Kun has gone away. That's terrible. That's Hick. Mion isn't smart enough to shed crocodile tears. Those tears were real. Her tears dissolved my demon's anger like how the sun melts ice. Believe me, Shion, I really don't know why Satoshi Kun disappeared. Neither Granny nor the Sanazaki family have anything to do with it. Granny forgave you, so she would never do anything to him. Mion, I'm so sorry. Did I hurt you? I took my hands off her neck and held her instead. Hick, I'm not hurt. You've been hurt a lot more than me, haven't you? Hick. I shouted at the demon in my mind. I believed in Mion. I had been convinced it was the Sonazaki family that made Satoshi Kun disappear. But Mion denied it while shedding tears. Between her and me, her tears are more convincing than, my, than any words. So I'd believe in her. It absolutely wasn't the Sonazaki family that made him disappear. So, do you really think that Satoshi Kun disappeared because of Yashiro Sama's curse? I don't believe in curses, and Mion didn't do it. <laughs> if it wasn't the curse on the Sanzaki family, who demoned them away? I don't know, I just know it's not Mion. It's not the Sanzaki family because Mion says so. That's stupid, Shion. Are you going to ignore Satoshi Kun's voice? I know, I know. You don't have to remind me, demon. I can hear his voice. I know he's mumbling with an ambivalent expression, like he always used to do, even though he knows help won't come. I'll help him no matter what. I'll save him if he's still if he's alive. I'll avenge him if he's dead. But Mion didn't do it. 
You just want to take it out on somebody. It doesn't matter who. But I'm Shion, not a demon. You're only a part of me. Don't try to take control. Fuck off. Don't ever show up again. The demon faded away. My body went limp, and I fell to the floor while holding me on. Shion, are you alright? I'm alright now, Mion. Why are we two different individuals? Why can't we just be one? Stop it. We've asked ourselves that so many times, but there's no answer. I'm Shion and you're Mion. That's just how it is. I don't care if I'm Mion or Shion. I just wanted to be one and equal with you. There's nothing we can do. You have the demon on your back. You're destined to become the successor. And we can't change that. I don't want that. I don't need a demon. I don't want it. I'm not a demon. I'm not... I want to be a human like you. Mion is a demon and Shion is a human. Even though we're twins, there's a difference between us. Was it impossible for humans to live with demons after all? It should be possible because they did it before. That's the legend of Hinamizawa. Humans and demons lived in harmony together as a Yashiro-sama washed over them. Mion, Shion, Satoshi-kun, demons, humans, a Yashiro-sama's curse, the series of mysterious deaths, Satoshi-kun's disappearance. We fell asleep while holding each other, while holding everything. Hmm. Receive new tips, note page 50, 64, and 85. And this was payment. Huh, so this, this recording so far is almost an hour so far. But, uh, yeah. Next part, we're gonna, like, continue on. We'll read some tips, and then we'll continue on with chapter 9. So, like, comment, and subscribe, and see you guys later. Bye-bye.